when I was studying at college theatre design and, uh, and film studies, one of the key things our lecturers taught us was that a good film or a good play has a strong beginning, middle, and end. But what this story or this play should do is should tell us and introduce us to the characters and something of their attributes. It should introduce a conflict and then how these characters that we're getting to know uh, resolve that conflict. This, this book here, this story here, this grand narrative tells us about the key character God himself, and also the subsequent characters, the co-stars, if you like, about humanity. It introduces us to a conflict that comes into the world and how God himself, the key character, seeks to resolve that conflict in and through his son, Jesus. That's what we're celebrating right here this week in Holy Week. But within this story, we have mini, mini stories that help us draw upon the character and something of his attributes. And I just want to read one very peculiar story to us today that helps us to draw upon one of the key attributes of our main character, God. 2 Kings 6 says this, The company of the prophets said to Elisha, Look, the place where we meet with you is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan, where each of us can get a pole, and let us build a place there for us to meet. And he said, Go. Then one of them said, Won't you please come with your servants? I will, Elisha replied. And he went with them. They went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my lord, he cried. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. Lift it out, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. A rather peculiar story, a, a story of how an axe head is lost in the Jordan and a story how a prophet throws a stick out and suddenly, miraculously, the axe head rises to the surface. It seems an odd story, but it does teach us some fundamental qualities and attributes of the God in whom we put our trust. That he is faithful and that he cares, and that he loves us. This kind of trivial matter was of concern for God, that he was prepared to move and respond. But what it is also is a story of the prophet's faith, how he's prepared to cut down a, tr a stick and throw it into the water, knowing that his God will make this axe head float. But also it's the faith of the servant who's called to take out and grab hold of it. That this, this servant who would have been filled with anxiety and worry and concern about this axe that he borrowed, about the dishonor that perhaps would come upon him when he had to go home and tell his friend, I've lost your axe. And this axe that actually probably was worth a, a, a substantial amount of money being iron, but of greater value than the fact that it belonged to someone else. And God cares. God loves and is prepared to move. What we see in this passage about God is that God knows us intimately. As a matter of fact, Psalm 139 tells us that, that God knows everything about us. He knows the deep inner thoughts. He knows every hair on our head. He is so involved in, in the matter of you and I. And that means that he's involved in the matters of how we feel and how we might be operating every day in our thoughts and our actions. But this God knows us intimately, and he knew this servant intimately. He knew the concerns that were troubling him over the loss of this, what seems like a trivial matter. He cares about him, but also he, he gives an invitation to us in that place of anxiety to put our trust in him. In calling out to the prophet, the prophet responds in faith. And as I said, so too the servant is called to respond in faith, to take hold of the axe, to put their trust in God. In this current turmoil that we find ourselves in, it was similar in Elisha's day. They were in a place of turmoil and trouble. There would have been a whole array of different things adding to that anxiety. 
For us, we may be in a, a place of national turmoil and, and we see that there's individual turmoils going on in each one of us as we struggle with anxiety over, over the matters of about work and finance and, and what the future might look like. What God says is to come to what we know about him, that he is a faithful God, to cast our cares upon him. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, he cares for you. Will you come to him in faith? Will you take that step of faith and almost throw out a stick, trusting that he will provide? God is fully able there's nothing that he cannot do. But he's not just able, he's gracious in how he responds. Will we trust in him? Will we lean on him in this situation? You see, he is not only the solution to our immediate problem, he's the solution, period. That's what this big story tells us. That the big conflict that's going on in the world is really a matter of sin. And sin is really not trusting in who God is and what he says. That actually we need to turn from our sin, repent of our sin, and come back to trusting in who he says he is, that he is faithful. And that he has the end of the story planned out. That means that when we look at our current situation with the turmoil and the anxiety that we perhaps feel around the fact that Boris is in hospital at the moment. The fact that we may have our own individual issues. We don't know how long this is going to last. We don't know what the future may look like. Here's the solution for it all. There is no other who is the greater solution than Jesus himself. And at this time in Holy Week, we remember it all the more. As we enter into Monday Thursday, and we sit around and we remind ourselves that he himself gave his body for us. As we eat of that bread and we partake in the wine, we remember that it was his body broken for us, that it was his blood shed for us. And as we move into Good Friday, remember the cost that it fully gave of himself and the cost for the Father and the Son in bringing about the resolve to this conflict. But then we celebrate, don't we, in God's faithfulness and him coming back to life on Easter Sunday. We remember that he's, he's entered in a new way, that his kingdom is breaking through. And with it, that there is the solution to all humankind's issues. He is faithful in all of his ways. And he cares for you. Enough that he would send his one and only son to die for you. So as we enter into Holy Week, as we look at the turmoil that surrounds us, whether it seems trivial or great, he is the solution for all the world's needs. So let's cast our anxieties upon him and look to his faithfulness. Bless you as you head into this week. I pray that God would meet you powerfully where you are at. And that you would know his love and his care for you.